Hello, my name is Thomas. Uh, thanks for letting me present here. This is my first time at ZK Summit. Uh, but I won't be talking about uh, yeah, zero knowledge topics. I will be talking about multi party computation. In fact, uh, yeah, I'll talk about Stoffel MPC, which uh, is a framework for multi party computation. It brings some form of yeah, privacy to public blockchains. Okay, so this is the structure of my talk. So in the beginning, I'll be talking a little bit about multi-party computation in general. We have a look at some yeah, introductory examples and also at some protocols. Uh, and afterwards, we, yeah, we have a short look at current solutions of privacy on public blockchains. Uh, yeah, and then we'll see why we probably need some other form of privacy like MPC and what are the benefits and why is it cool. Uh, and after that, yeah, we'll uh, have a look at our framework Stoffel MPC, which basically allows developers yeah, to, to bring some form of privacy to the blockchain leveraging MPC. Um, and, so, yeah, and then we will have a look at some uh, yeah, uh, general purpose MPC, which is needed for this, and we'll have a look at compilers and virtual machines. And in the end, uh, yeah, we'll have a look at open problems and give some outlook Okay, yeah, so first, MPC. So what is MPC? I mean, MPC stands for multi-party computation, and it's basically when you have yeah, several people who have a secret, and they don't want to re reveal that secret, but they would yeah, benefit from some computation over their secrets. So, I mean, what you often read is in the papers is this sentence, multi-party computation allows parties to jointly compute a function over their inputs while keeping them private. Yeah, and uh, I mean, what a funny example is, for example, if, you, if you're working at some company and you're an employee there and you would yeah, benefit from knowing maybe the average salary the company pays. So what you can do is the first employee, it takes his or her salary and then masks it with some random number. So he adds the random number to the salary and then he writes it down on a piece of paper and then he passes it on to the next person again right adding his salary to it and then it goes round and round and round and in the end you get back get, it gets back to the first person and you can then subtract the secret number and divide it by the people and then you have your average salary which is then broadcasted by some by one party but this is yeah somehow or at least this example is very tied to this pro uh, specific problem instance. So yeah, we want to do some more general MPC. So what can we do? So yeah, you probably all know Shamir's secret sharing from, from uh, yeah, basically threshold wallets or something like that. So how does it work? I mean, you have a secret and you encode that secret as a point on the polynomial. So. Uh, Basically, it's here, for example, you have the 15. It's the evalu evaluation of the po polynomial at x equals 0. Yeah, and then you give out shares to other people, which are points on the polynomial, right? So you have here player 1, 2, and 3. And if you agree that the x coordinate is always the player number, and then you can hand out these shares without uh, yeah, specifying the x coordinate. So player 1 would get, uh, what is it, 8 here, player 2 would get 3, and player 3, 0. Yeah, and then, I mean, basically the secret is split up and encoded in the, into these points, and then you can re reconstruct the secret by using these points with the Lagrange interpolation. Uh, yeah, the nice thing about this is here that it depends on the degree of the polynomial of what kind of reconstruction scheme you have, because, uh, yeah, for example, if you have a parabola, you need uh, three points, and for the general case, you always need n plus one points, yeah. So, I, you could, so you could even add here P4 and P5, and then any three out of five of these shares could reconstruct the secret. Okay, but this was only an example now for yeah, the case where you have uh, one secret and you divide it into several shares. So now we have yeah, several uh, secrets. In fact, we have two here. And uh, let's say we have now three players who each have a share of these two secrets. And now, when it get, what gets really interesting is when you, uh, yeah, when you want to compute with it, right? So how can you compute in this case? So think of it as points on the polynomial, and if you then consider addition, I mean, you can just, if you add these points on the polynomial, then basically you, you 
add the, these polynomials together, and yeah, which is basically adding these secrets then together. So addition is pretty yeah, simple because it doesn't require any, so, any form of interaction. But it gets a little bit more difficult with multiplication. I mean, you have the case where you have some public, publicly known constant. There you can do it similar to addition. But it doesn't work if you have uh, yeah, basically uh, yeah, two shares. You can't multiply that because when you're multiplying a parabola with another parabola, you get yeah, another degree of the polynomial. And yeah, then your reconstruction scheme doesn't work. So then you have basically to do uh, a new sharing uh, of this, yeah, of this uh, combined secret. So this is not nice. It requires a lot of interaction. Uh, so what can we do here? There have been some further, oh, so I should mention, this is the BGW protocol in the literature. So it's fairly old. And there have been a lot of improvements to this protocol. Uh, yeah, so the most, uh, or the, yeah, mainly all protocols that use this uh, MPC in the pre-processing world, where you basically have an offline and an online phase. And in the offline phase, you prepare something for the online phase, which in this case are these beaver triples. And these beaver triples are then consumed for every multiplication, right? So you have these values A, B, C, which you share in, inside this MPC, and it obeys this relation C is equal to AB. Uh, and then when you want to carry out a multiplication, you, you, are, you use one of these beaver triples and use the following relation. So each player takes this share X uh, and Y, and then he subtracts the secret shared A and B, and he then uh, opens it as the D and E. Uh, so, and after that, you can multiply it locally with this. So this is pretty nice. Uh, yeah, and then there have been several other improvements of this protocol. It's called Bedoza, Speeds, Overdrive, High Gear. There are a lot of protocols like this. But what they do is they optimize how these Beaver triples are constructed. You can use, yeah, uh, I think some protocols use somewhat homomorphic encryption for that. Others use uh, oblivious transfer. Um, and sometimes they add uh, these message authentication codes so that, yeah, this MPC works in a malicious security model. Uh, yeah. So here, this is, this is an uh, excerpt which I have taken from the MPSpeeds repo. I will tell what MPSpeeds is later, but I just want to yeah, show you this slide so that you know that there are different security models under which MPC works. So basically, we have this malicious, covered, and semi-honest uh, yeah, security models, where malicious just means that the players don't stick to the protocol, and covered is covered security is that they stick to the protocol if they knew, oh, that, no, they don't stick to the protocol, uh, no. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, when they know that they will be discovered cheating, they don't cheat. That's what it is. Yeah, and semi-honest is that they just follow the protocol. Uh, and then you have these different uh, majority settings, honest and dishonest. Where is it? Yeah, there. And, of, and the field over which you are operating can be different. And then there are some MPC protocols which are entirely different, like Garbling, for example, where you encrypt the circuit and send it around. Okay. Yeah, let's now come to blockchain privacy. I mean, everything you do on a blockchain is basically public, so what can we do to avoid this, or what is done to avoid it? Uh, yeah, I mean, we have this ZK proofs. We've heard a lot about them. Basically, Zcash, you can send around money without yeah, connecting uh, sender and recipient. This has then been ported to Ethereum uh, with Tornado Cash. Then you have the Aztec protocol, which is a ZK ZK rollup. So it combines the, yeah, the rollup roll guarantees you get from zero knowledge proofs together with this, uh, yeah, with this shielding. Yeah, then there's new cipher, which does this proxy re-encryption. And so what, from my understanding, this is basically some access mechanism, yeah, that you can, uh, so if Alice has some data, she, she can encrypt it. And then she can allow some other party to get access. And then other parties can re-encrypt it on her behalf for this other party without having some intermediate decryption of it. And they are also do some FHE research, I think, but I'm not sure. 
So uh, yeah, but this is basically research, yeah, because it's some sort of holy grail of computing over secret data. Another category are these trusted execution environments. There is Secret Network and uh, yeah, Obscuro, and they use these trusted hardware devices. Uh, yeah, basically they're in the CPU, like Intel SGX. Um, yeah, and then there's MPC. So currently MPC is in most situations used yeah, for wallet management. So there isn't really any computation over these secrets. They are just split apart and then reconstructed. Yeah, but we want to change this, right? So that's why I have put Stoffel MPC there as an outlook for the future. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. So, yeah, so why do we need multi-party computation? So I mean, multi-party computation offers some advantages. So the problem with zero knowledge proofs is that you can't do them on shared data, right? So I mean, if you think of somehow, for example, an order book or something like that, uh, you don't have really anybody who can do this zero knowledge proof for the data. So it doesn't work in this case. Uh, yeah, the problem with, and you don't have that for MPC, which is quite nice. So why there is uh, some endeavor to yeah, build these on-chain on exchanges using MPC. Yeah, then uh, you don't have these trust assumptions like in the trusted execution environments because you don't have to trust any hardware, you don't have to trust any manufacturer. Um, and to some degree, MPC is already used in practice. So it, it's not that far away like fully homomorphic encryption. I mean, there have been some instances where it is used uh, for medical data and yeah, stuff like that. So the problem with MPC is a little bit that, yeah, you always have this communication overhead. And if the parties are far apart, you always have this latency between them. So this is not nice. And yeah, the other thing is that general purpose MPC is quite hard. So because, yeah, you, you get this overhead of virtual machines and compilers and, yeah. Okay, so there, let's now have a look at Stoffel MPC. So yeah, Stoffel MPC, again, is this framework for a developer to build this privacy ap preserving applications with MPC. Um, and for that, we need general purpose MC, MPC. So what does it mean? I mean, it's, it's similar to the, the zero knowledge case where yeah, the, the developer writes his code or yeah, what he wants the MPC, MPC to be done in some domain specific language. We'll see later why we need that. And then a compiler takes care of it and compiles it to an arithmetic circuit. It's also possible to use a Boolean circuit. Uh, and after that, it gets further compiled into bytecode for some VM. So what the, yeah, the things we need for general purpose multi-party computation is the domain-specific language compiler and virtual machine. But this is only the MPC world, right? I mean, we want to somehow connect this MPC to the blockchain. Yeah, and how does, or how could this look like? Yeah, I mean, you basically have three parties here, which is the MPC, the user, and the Ethereum mainnet or any blockchain. And the interaction between user and blockchain stays basically the same. You have, yeah, I mean, you can query data from Ethereum, you can write to it using transactions. Uh, but then you would also have this private data interaction with the MPC. And here the MPC, uh, yeah, it operates in this MPC as a service model, which means that the secret data is input by the user to the MPC. So the MPC nodes don't make up their secrets themselves. They, they basically work for the user. And yeah, they can also query the output from the MPC for private data. And then you have this interaction between the MPC and the blockchain in a sense that when yeah, public data is required or when you, yeah, when you want to open these yeah, these, uh, these shares, this secret, then the MPC writes it to the blockchain. And in that, that sense, the blockchain is some sort of coordinator for the MPC because yeah, the MPC is constantly querying or looking at the blockchain if anything is needed. Um, okay, yeah, so how does it look like or what are we doing at Hashclock? So we are building this Stoffel MPC framework. It's inspired by MP Speeds. MP Speeds is basically some form of testing framework for different MPC protocols. Uh, yeah, so it offers this general purpose MPC. And 
yeah, you can, uh, the developer can, I mean, the, it already impl implements this general purpose MPC and then the developer can specify with which MPC protocol he wants his code to be executed. Uh, yeah, we use some modular crate architecture in Rust. I, I put here yeah, the, the list of the subcrates which we are currently using or what we are thinking of how it will look like. And yeah, it would be nice if the developer had the choice to use this framework in two different ways. So on the one hand, he would use it like I've shown you before, but on the, on the other hand, he would also be able to use subcrates of this. So for example, the, uh, here the MPC, in the MPC crates, there would then be implementations of different MPC protocols, and then they could uh, yeah, include it in their application how they like. Um, okay. Yeah, so coming back to these uh, to this three things, you have this language, the, the compiler, and also the, uh, the virtual machine. So why do we need a domain-specific language? Um, yeah, basically we want the developer that he's able to write his applications without knowing anything about MPC. So, yeah, but if you have, have a look at it, how, how this works, I mean, some code of it has to be run in the MPC and the other part of the code has to be run in the blockchain. So the compiler should have to figure out how this is separated. And then the developer does only have to put, yeah, to put uh, secret types there or clear types. And the compiler figures out how this is separated and compiles it for, yeah, Ethereum mainnet or for the MPC VM. We got about five more minutes. Five minutes? Okay. Yeah, uh, we, so here I put some, yeah, compiler specific problems from MPC. Uh, what's interesting about MPC is that you want to avoid these in interactions because they are quite costly. And yeah, in order to do that, the compiler tries to penalize the, a lot of these yeah, communications and they, are, they want to batch that into a single round of communication. Another thing which is a problem is, yeah, if you have this execution path dependence. So in this example, I mean, if X is secret shared and you have some comparison like in an if statement, yeah, then it's pretty hard to, f yeah, to figure out if it's true or false. So what do you do is that you somehow defer the, the evaluation of it. Uh, this, is, this technique is some, sometimes known as the branchless programming. Um, but it's a problem, right? Because this then scales linearly with the circuit size and you have that in your communication. And if you have something like this, for example, where you have an array and you want to set uh, yeah, uh, some slot of the array to one, but this is a secret shared value, uh, you run into a problem because your array might be pretty large, right? It could be 1,000 or 10,000 10, slots. Uh, yeah, and then you have to resort to other techniques like oblivious data and uh, yeah, it's sometimes called oblivious RAM, where you somehow want to hide the read and write access. Mm. Yeah, and th this is our, yeah, or what we think what our virtual machine will look like. So it's uh, inspired by MP Speeds and Scale Mamba. Scale Mamba is basically some sort of sister project to yeah, MP Speeds. And yeah, we have these, uh, it, is, it uses a risk design. So we have these uh, opcodes for, yeah, on the one hand you have opcodes for arithmetic circuits, on the other hand for, uh, for binary circuits, and then you have some opcodes for both, some general opcodes. Uh, and we have these type registers, which are for every type. So, I mean, you have the clear type registers, you have the secret type registers, and you have the call stack. And these cores then communicate by using the memory. So if core, this core needs to communicate with that core, it would go over the memory. And if it, this, the core communicates with uh, another core at, on some different MPC node, then you would have some network channel between them. Um, yeah, okay. Yeah, so here I have put some open problems which we think are quite interesting. So we want to add some zero knowledge functionality so that we get some MPC with public verifiability, which means that yeah, basically anyone can check that the MPC is doing correct. 
then there's this, the next one is much more of an implementation question because basically you want, yeah, I mean, you want to use several CPU cores for the VM. And then it's a question of how to do it because, I mean, yeah, prob you probably want to use some work, uh, some work st stealing schedule. So, and this then leads to the using this Tokyo in Rust. Uh, and we want to support other robust MPC protocols. So there is currently this, or what we are implementing is this Honey Badger MPC protocol, uh, but there are other interesting MPC protocols. This question is much about, uh, yeah, about this oblivion, oblivious write and read access. So how do you handle these data types? Uh, and this question is, that, yeah, I mean, MP this, all what I've shown is currently much more in this MPC as a sidechain framework. So you don't inherit the la layer one security. Uh, yeah, and it, it would be nice if you can, could somehow execute this as a roll up. Yeah, and the last one is about these Beaver triples. If you remember, it was this uh, in the offline phase where you constantly process these Beaver triples and you need this interaction between the nodes. Yeah, and in there you would just have some uh, yeah, pseudo-random function, basically, which you seed, but they are correlated with each other. So you would, it would only require uh, yeah, an interaction at the beginning. Yeah, okay, so we want to say special thanks to the people at UIUC and IC3 because what we are doing uh, wouldn't not be possible without their work. So thanks a lot. Yeah, and thanks to you for listening to my talk. Uh, if you want to stay in touch, here is the repository for Stoffel MPC. We just open sourced it. And this is yeah, Hashcloak. You can follow it on Twitter. And we are currently hiring for MPC engineers. supposed to have some private state shared between two parties, right? Yeah, so like, inside the MPC, right, yeah. So you want the MPC to be like what, like a network that sort of jointly holds the secret? Of yeah, exactly. So you have this private data, and the private data is uh, shared inside this MPC as, yeah, as these uh, shares, right? So each node holds a share of the secrets. And so, but is it supposed to be like a cluster with like, I don't know, uh, like N of N sort of secret shares? So yeah, I mean, what you, what, it depends on the MPC protocol that you are using, right? So in what we are currently looking at, you have this uh, threshold guarantee for where you, are, where you think that uh, one third can be, or one third of the parties inside the protocol, protocol can be malicious, and it still works, okay. right? And you, and the protocol also offers some form of guaranteed output delivery, that you always get an output if you stay in that safety margin. And the idea is that the client just sort of like, like deals secret shares to the whole sort of decentralized network of the MPC, and then they will perform computations later, just sort of like a cloud distributed. Yeah, cloud it's type exactly. Thing. Yeah, yeah. And why is the blockchain involved? Like why, yeah, I mean, you, you want that you get this form of privacy on to the blockchain, right? So, how do you? I mean, how do you get privacy to the blockchain? Uh, this could be some way to do it. And they would have like a, a, like a whitelist of sig like public keys of the nodes of the descent. Like you need somehow like like uh, anchor the identities of the decentralized sort of entities in the MPC cloud thing into the blockchain, right? Otherwise, if that's the kind of goal of somebody be able to sort of query inside of the blockchain, like in a smart contract, I want to get some of the data from something or get some computation of it, like a mean of a bunch of. Uh, numbers that are secret shared, and then the MPC sort of cluster needs to look at the blockchain, see that request, do it, the thing, yeah, in that and way, sort of sign that output and put it like send it back to the blockchain. Exactly, you would have this interaction between MPC and blockchain. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks. 
Perfect. Okay, I think we're out of time. So uh, once again, thanks, Thomas.